cherished wartime iron workhorse born in the USA. One, two, three. Needs transporting across the country for a popular winter extravaganza. Hello, everybody. I'll be all excited. Can a team move it 160 miles? Keep that handheld radio on. Through crowded towns, country lanes. You've got two concrete bollards on your right. And the tightest of squeezes. We have to miss the manhole covers. To deliver this exquisite locomotive without a scratch. What's up, mate? It's a monumental challenge. Don't go too far that way. I've got to get fast as well. Whoa! Whoa! even for the world's toughest train truckers. The 2.5-mile Chelsea and Wallingford branch line in Oxfordshire was opened in 1866 and was part of the Great Western Railway network until closure in 1959. In 1981, the line was rescued and slowly returned to health as a heritage attraction. The railway has a few of its own engines, but not the kind that would be a major box office draw for its hugely popular winter festival as the Polar Express. It is without doubt the most important event of the year. It brings in more money than probably the rest of the year put together. So absolutely critical to the survival of Heritage Railways. The perfect engine for this job is a 1940s former American military steam train designated the S-160. And Mr. Iron Horse himself proudly struts out of the roundhouse. 2,120 of these US Army steam locomotives were built between 1942 and 1946. They were deployed worldwide as part of the war effort to move military hardware and civilian goods. Officers at Camp Claiborne are experienced railroad men, recruited from the nation's major railroads. Actual railroad experience is also looked for among enlisted personnel, with many old timers in the ranks. Today, there are just six S-160s left in the UK. But right now, the 73-tonne specimen that's been booked by the Chelsea and Wallingford Railway is nowhere near there. It's at home, 160 miles away, in Staffordshire, at the Churnet Valley Railway. Moving it to Oxfordshire will take careful planning and extreme engineering. Sixty-seven miles south, family-run firm Allerley's. Allerley's heavy haulage. Are experts at the challenging task of moving heavyweight railway locomotives. Founded in the 1950s by Morris Allerley, the business has grown from a small agricultural mover to become one of the trusted names in the heavy haulage industry. We can move anything. Massive abnormal loads, enormous steel girders, and super long lengths of pipe, as well as locomotives of all shapes and sizes, are all in a day's work for this team. Moving trains is a very specialist industry, and we're one of the few companies within the UK that can actually move these big trains and locomotives. Nobody expects to see a loco on the back of a lorry. There's never a day when you see it where it's not impressive. Today, the crew need to be at the very top of their game. No problem. Their mission is to shift this complex and valuable iron workhorse to its destination without a scratch on it. With a maximum fully loaded speed of just 30 miles an hour, this is a two-day job. Starting at Churnet Valley, the team will break the journey with an overnight stop-off at the cruise depot on day one, before continuing on to Chelsea and Wallingford the following day. It's the first day of the move, and bright and early, the crew's lead driver, Kevin Norris, and his expert team arrive here at Churnet Valley. The locomotive sits on deep-set rails. The team's first task is to construct a loading ramp as close as possible to it and connect it directly to the trailer. 
The engine's axles are fixed, so if its wheels don't perfectly align with the rails on the ramp, there could easily be a derailment. Stage one. A diesel train pushes the S160 into the right position. But before loading can begin, the team must reduce the engine's weight by letting the water and steam out. Can't be much more left in it, can it? No. Right, we'll get the winch out then, mate. Yeah. Gavin Josephs will be driving the second truck carrying the engine's tender, or coal store. Yeah, it's very physical. Try and do as least as possible there. That's what the young lads are for. And luckily for Gavin, his prayers have been answered. Sebastian Ranzio joined the team less than a week ago. OK, sir. Well, me old man, David Ranzio, works here as well. And I've been coming here since as a young boy, so I've started coming to the company when I was around about seven. So ever since I've turned 18, I was like, Dad, have a word, let me see if I can start work, see if I can start work. Then it just happened. Here I am now today. With the ramp assembled, Kev gives Seb the critical job of guiding the winch's steel cable back onto its drum as it slowly hauls the engine onto the trailer. Take the weight on slowly. Take it on. It's a slow and delicate process. Kev needs to watch each wheel every step of the way. Just making sure that the wheels line up with the points. Slow it down a bit. So the flange lines up. The little flange has to sit inside of the rails. And that all the wheels are turning. Or any of the sand pipes at the front or the back don't catch. To stop the engine suddenly rolling backwards, Kevin needs to keep a chock or wooden stopper ready at all times. What's up, mate? Sluice it back a touch, then. Kev is keeping a watchful eye on how well Seb literally learns the ropes. It's vital that the winch cable is wound up correctly. Just when the winch uh, runs slack as the locos roll sometimes, the winch cable goes slack and they don't jump in properly, so the cable ends up crossing over. And if you've got a lot of weight on it, it damages the cable. The winch is not winding onto its drum evenly, which could cause serious damage. Kev can't take any risks. He decides to step in. Do I? Hold the cable tight for as tightish. Keep your fingers out of the way. I just take it on. Keep the cable tight. That way you haven't got your fingers in the winch. Keep your fingers clear. See how you're getting no gaps now. OK. Satisfied that trainee Seb is on top of things, the winching can continue. He started last Thursday, so it's his fourth day. So it's a little bit uh, new to take in, so you learn on the job. Um, it's all a bit experience. To take the weight. Keep going. Slow it down. Hold it there. With the engine's weight now positioned evenly on the trailer, the next task is to chain this giant down. Just looking where the wheel weights are, so I can look where to chain it from. And the, the, the loco is in the middle of the trailer, so I'll get half the weight on the trailer and half the, the weight on the track unit. And then I've got enough weight for traction to go up the hill out of here. OK, mate, jump down. We'll put some chains on. This one, it's an American loco. When they needed steam engine very quickly, this was built as a mass-produced loco because all the main important parts are on the outside, so they're easily accessible for it. Seems to be quite a popular loco and quite a powerful loco. It's not just the number of chains that's crucial in securing the engine. It's where they're positioned, too. If there's enough chains on there or chains okay. aren't tight, the loco will move. Um, you don't want it moving about, so that's why we chain it forwards and backwards and put the protections over as 
this loco is somebody's pride and joy. So I don't want the paintwork marking on it. It's dirty work, but someone's got to do it. And Kev thinks it should be Seb. All that stuff you can get in there, mate. Take all the slack out of him, like that, Try and twist him in to get him as tight as you can. Wind him up now, mate. It's very much in house training effort is taught by the drivers, because most of the drivers are started at the bottom and worked up. So once you know that, you train the second man up. We all work on the same idea, so it's learning on the job, it's the best way you remember it. With the engine now secure, Kev, Gavin and Seb will dismantle the ramp as fast as possible and get ready for the next job, loading the giant tender. Before lead driver Kevin Norris and his crew are able to leave the Churnit Valley Railway in Staffordshire and start their two-day journey south, they have one last job. Build another ramp and load the S160's coal tender. Yeah, time to get the tender loaded now. Seb's confidence in the technicalities of the job seems to be growing. OK, mate. So if you just guide him to go forward now, tell him to wind on to go forward. Finger in. In. Go on. Go on, up some more. Up some more. Up some more. OK. Hold him there. If you shut the two stinger taps now, the neck can't drop then. OK, you're happy for him to move? Yeah. You just tell him to move now. Each of the axles on the trailer can be lowered and lifted using powerful hydraulics. The height on either side can be individually adjusted to control the angle of the trailer deck or drop it all the way down for the loading process. Once the tender is safely on the trailer, the hydraulics must push this ultra-heavy load upwards to the height of the cab. All axles must operate in perfect unison. If not, even one small difference in height could turn this day into a nightmare. If Seb secretly hates trains, then this may not be the career for him. It's trains. Every day, 95% is trains. It never seems to stop. It's great, that. Take the weight on slowly. As the tender begins to move up the ramp, Gavin must make sure the inner wheel flanges, or rims, don't ride up onto the rail. Good so far. Half of it's on. Just making sure the uh, wheels go up on the ramp, the flange is on the right side, so it doesn't derail. All's looking good. OK, Seb. They all think it's a glamorous job, but it really isn't. It's a dirty, horrible job sometimes. With the tender now up on its own trailer, it's back to the hard work of taking another ramp apart. The big rail's over there. Over 100 kilos. Up to the left and forward, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK. For each job, the support staff back at base anticipate every conceivable problem that might occur en route. Most of the obstacles and challenges are quite literally bridges. Over bridges, under bridges, viaducts, you name it. We'll have a lot of conversations with structure owners to make sure that we're facilitating what they require for us to do in order to be able to traverse over their structures and whether that's dropping the trailer down or lifting it up or spreading the weight a little bit more, then we'll make sure that we accommodate. Kev is aware that one bridge on their route tomorrow has virtually no height clearance. Yeah, almost done. Check the height on the loco. That loco runs quite high. It runs with 16 foot 4, 16 foot 5 on the trailer, with the trailer running quite low, so 
you haven't got a lot of clearance on bridges. So if you check and then check again. With cab and trailer now reconnected, Kev takes one last opportunity to double check his maths. OK, mate, if you come down to somewhere there. Yeah. What height is that reading? About 403. 403. 13 2. 13 2. You normally run this trailer at 39 inches. If I run it at 39 inches, it's too high. We'll get it out of the road and we'll have to run it at uh, 35 inches or put it at 16 foot 5. We've got an inch to spare on a bridge. That's all we need. Confident that with a load that weighs close to 120 tonnes and is over 18 metres long, just 2.5 centimetres clearance is plenty. Kev decides it's time they got going. All right, mate, we'll take it as wide out to the right as we can go out. With the road clear, Kev can start to lead the convoy out of the yard. They're all clear, Kev. But with so many sharp corners and tight bends en route, being able to steer the trailer independently via remote control is vital, which today is Seb's job. Uh, we'll pull forward about a lorry length so we can get Gavin in behind and we'll set the trailer up, mate. That's it, mate. Just watch it. Don't get catch up with you get too close on the curve. Keep it going, Kev. Kev needs to leave enough space behind him to allow Gavin to haul his truck with the tender on it right up behind the locomotive. Is that enough room for you now, Gav? Oh, OK, mate. Uh, that'll do. Get your wheels straight. Yeah, the wheels are straight. Oh, OK, mate. We'll go and sort Gav out. Gavin's truck, carrying the tender, is now lined up behind the engine, ready for the off. As escort driver, Seb will be the eyes and ears of the convoy, and over the next 73 miles, will alert the drivers of any problems ahead. We have a fleet of in-house escort vehicles and drivers, and they are there to accompany the truck throughout their journey and to warn of the drivers of the dangers whilst they're on the road. OK, come up, Seb. Yeah, come up. Actually, right there, red Honda Civic and the van's coming down on the black BMW. Oh, come out. If you could, you could hold the traffic back for us a little bit. Yeah, do you mind just moving to this side of the road? Just, just... Yeah, just, just swing over the loop around me. Being the escort driver isn't easy. There is plenty for Seb to watch out for. Uh, Matt, two trucks are coming in. Do you mind just doing a little bit on this side of the road for us? One second. Thank you. Seb, where are you? Uh, just round the corner on top of the hill. OK, is it all right to come up? Is there anything that traffic stops? Yeah, come up. This is only day one of the journey. The crew's final destination is 160 miles away in Oxfordshire. Yeah, you're all clear. Nothing can up. Just the transit van parked in the labor. They plan to get to their own company's depot halfway this evening. Lorry coming down towards you. Yeah, just hold him slowing back a little bit just so we can get it round onto the level bit, mate. But with a top speed of 30 miles per hour, the best they can hope for today is a three-hour journey. That's it, spot on, mate. If you could go to the top of that hill now, the next hill, and then just, uh, as it goes over the brow hill, I'll just warn them from uh, coming down, please, mate, so we can get up here. Yeah, received. The team must make allowances for other vehicles. Are you there, Seb? We're coming round now, mate. Yeah, yeah received. When you're ready. OK, mate, we're coming round and have planned the route to the last turn. To be fair, the road's wide enough now, mate. If you want to get yourself ahead a little bit and get round that junction and then steer it round, we won't hold any traffic up then. There she is. Traffic has stopped for us. We'll take it wide to the right and go round, mate. With a tight left turn in front of him, Kev needs Seb to abandon his road traffic management role and instead, remote steer the trailer. 
Just keep it off the curve on the right hand side, mate, and it gets a bit tight on the curve on the left hand side, but it will go round. Yeah, received. With both trucks safely around the corner, Seb's back on lookout. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. You're all clear. Having successfully negotiated country lanes and a handful of urban streets, Kev, Seb and Gavin can breathe a bit easier as they hit the motorway. Finally, after 10 hours on the clock and halfway through their journey, the crew pull up at the company's depot in Studley. It's gone all right today. It was a little bit awkward sometimes, but it went all right. It didn't rain. It's back in the yard safe for the night. Tomorrow, Kevin and the team must negotiate the one major challenge on their route, a bridge with just 2.5 centimetres of clearance. It's 6 a.m. in the trucking team's dark and chilly haulage depot. Morning checks. Check everything's tight, nothing's loose, no damaged tires. Kevin Norris is gearing up for day two of the move. We've got to go down to uh, Wallingford today, unload these in the order they want them, make sure they're coupled up and they're happy. So hopefully by about two o'clock this afternoon, we should have these unloaded. Kev and his team are moving locomotive S160 to the Chelsea and Wallingford Railway, 88 miles away, who await its arrival with bated breath, as it'll be the star attraction over the winter months as the Polar Express. Running our Santa specials is a really important part of the, the calendar. We'll be carrying something like 25,000 passengers over Christmas. We're running a much longer train than we would during the normal operating season. So we need a large, powerful loco in order to pull this particular train over the Christmas period. There you go, man. Transporting this giant load requires enormous skill, especially as today there may be a problem. There's one little footbridge we've got to go under that is marked at 16 foot high. And as this is 16 foot four, we have to go over into the other side of the carriageway to go under it, which generally around Oxford can be a little bit busy. With most of us still waking up, Kev, second driver Gavin and trainee Seb are ready for the off. This time, with Seb as escort driver on lookout behind the convoy. Keep it coming, Kev, you're all clear. Okay, mate. Ready? Ready when you are. By 6.45, the traffic is starting to pick up. Okay, mate, when there's a break in the traffic, could we move over, please, mate? We're turning right at this island. There you go. Move over to the middle now. Have you seen the traffic? Yeah, the M42 after 7 o'clock in the morning, it's all like that, mate. But it makes it easier for us to get over onto the M40 because the traffic's going slow in a bit. Kev has already calculated that they only have 2.5 centimetres clearance under a bridge up ahead. Kev's only option is to move his truck into the place with the most height clearance, the middle of the road. It's vital that Seb holds back any traffic as Kev gets closer. OK, Seb, this is where this low bridge structure is. So we'll move over. Uh, if you hold back a little bit so you can see what the loco's like on the bridge, if you're not sure, mate, we'll stop and get out and we'll have a look. Yeah, And just hold back a little, mate, we'll creep up to this bridge. That's it, mate. If you drop back, then you'll be able to see the appearance between the loco and the bridge. OK, mate, can you see all right, yeah? Yeah. Seb is now the critical eyes and ears for Kev. If he gets this wrong, 80 tonnes of steam locomotive may soon lie across the road, a real highway to hell.
Kev reduces his speed to a crawl. His position on the road must be perfect. Oh, good step, yeah? Yeah, all good. Yeah, I have been under it before with a low cut, but I couldn't remember how close it was. With the only major obstacle cleared, Kev, second driver Gavin, and Seb's final destination is in sight, the Chelsea and Wallingford Railway. OK, Seb, the place we're going to is up here, about three quarters of a mile on the right-hand side. Yep. We'll pull up on the left just before it, and then you'll be able to park your van up then. Yeah, it is. After four hours on the road, they finally arrive. Now they must guide the giant tender into the very tight drop-off point. Spot on, mate. Keep going, you're all clear. Stick around this corner, we'll straighten my trailer off, and uh, we're going to get Kevin, man. Yeah, there is you. Whenever you're ready, Seb, mate, we'll uh, get her off the road. Oh, then I'll go get Kevin. With the tender safely in position, it's time for phase two. Yeah, I'm on my way. Six and four's open, mate. The lead's on the back. Yeah, part two. Get the other trail, Lorian. His one's a bit longer. Oh, then when you're ready. OK, mate. We can go. There you go when you're ready. Seb's job is to ensure that the trailer keeps well away from sharp corners and lines up precisely where Kev wants it in the yard. Keep it going, Kev. At the moment, I'm enjoying doing my second man job, but hopefully in the future, I will be getting onto the big wagons, get my class one license, and then hit the road. Look, that mini green wheelie bin's on the left hand side here. Yeah? Yep. The trailer tight over to that, mate, then we'll be able to pass. Yeah, received. Okay, mate, that'll do us. Uh, we'll be able to pass it out, I think. Oh, I'm liking the work. It's only about my fifth shift in, but I'm liking it. The mighty steam engine and its tender have safely arrived at their temporary new home. But for Kevin, Gavin and Seb, now the real work begins. This is a little bit different. We can't use that tracked unit to winch the tender down because we can't get it out. So I've got to drop this winch off, this neck and winch, turn round and back up to him so we can use this one to unload him and then same again with the low cut. So, uh, 10 minutes, we should be somewhere near. First, they'll drive the truck with the tender forwards into the yard, uncouple Gavin's cab and park it, then build a ramp and unload the tender from the trailer. Then they need to dismantle the ramp and recouple the cab and trailer. Once empty, they'll reverse it back out of the way, squeezing past the second unit carrying the engine. The space is incredibly tight. One false move, and they're wedged in. Seb's hours spent gaming at home may not have been entirely in vain. Left, right, on. I've been told not to touch these three. Ready when you are, Gav. All right, man. Keep it going, you're all clear. Try the trial to the left of this head. It's as left as it will go. That's fine, that's all right. Before unloading can begin, the team need to disconnect the driver's cab from its trailer. And the only way to do that is to decompress the hydraulic system. When it steers or you lift, you put pressure in the system. So as we're disconnecting it, all we're doing is dropping the pressure out from here now across so we can get the pipes on and off again afterwards. It does make a mess if uh, one pipe does blow. It makes uh, quite a fountain. OK, Chung.
Let's wait for him to finish moving, mate, and we'll start doing it then. With the cab gone, they now have the space they need to construct the ramp to unload the tender. Go back. What bit more? more. I'm actually sweating. It is the middle of November, yeah? This is the easier bit now that the rails are there. We're just packing it up now, keep it stable so the rail doesn't move when it unloads. We tend to find on uneven ground that the points will kick up. So you have to watch that in case it, uh, it moves and it possibly derails it. Right, I'll back my truck up and I'll put the winch on, mate. I feel like a bit of room. With everything in position, they start to unload. What's up? Take the weight on, please, mate. All that remains now is to ensure that the winch cable is at the correct tension. Just take it on a little touch so it goes tight and it starts to move, then it'll come back off. Off. Here you go, sir. Kev keeps a chock at the ready in case any wheel slips off a rail. That's it, then. Now at the bottom of the ramp, the yard team attach another engine to pull it clear. With the tender safely out of the way, the team must make space to unload the steam engine. First, they must reattach the cab to the empty trailer. Bring it back. Ready when you are. This is now the critical part of the operation. Gavin and Seb must reverse this enormous trailer. Keep it coming, you're all clear. Back far enough to allow Kev space to drive his truck forward to where he can unload the steam engine. That's why I'm going to go sit inside now, because uh, I don't think I'll get the door open. Keep it coming. Gavin has barely enough space left. Seb had better be paying attention. Keep it coming. Don't go too far that way. I've got to get fast as well. Gavin is struggling to reverse his giant truck out of the tightest of spaces. Keep it coming. With the assistance of trainee Seb, who seems pretty relaxed about it all. Keep it coming. All right, Seb, uh, uh, we'll steer me forward now and uh, we'll get back. Yeah, received. When you're ready, Kev. OK, Seb, mate, going forward. Gavin has reversed as far as the space will allow. In the truck carrying the engine, Kev must hope he's now got enough room to move forward. Keep it going, clear both sides. Keep it going, clear both sides. That's as close you can get to the left. That's fine, mate. I'm going to uh, stop somewhere there and we'll have a look at the front, mate. Right? Okay. Yeah, received. Finally, Kevin is happy. OK, mate, that'll do. Sound. With the tender unloaded, it's time for the star of the show. It's a little bit more time consuming. It's a bigger ramp, uh, a little bit more packing, and the ground isn't the levelest here, so uh, everything will all sit on a funny angle. Um, but as long as we take our time, we'll have no problems. The secret to these is getting them somewhere near lined up, as the axles don't turn. So they'll want to move the easiest feature, which will be the ramp. For Kev, this isn't just another delivery. I have a passion for steam. I think it's a great invention. It really is. I've grown up with steam. My dad's got 
grew up the steamroller, so at 10 years old, I was driving steamrollers. Just something about it, a smell. Um, it's like when you see one of these come into, into a station, it has a different feeling compared to some modern mainline train. They're built to last. With the cabin trailer decoupled, Kev can move the cab out of the way, leaving the team space to build the next unloading ramp. All good. Kev and Gavin have built so many ramps, they could probably do it in their sleep. But this is a chance for Seb to pull his and the rail's weight. Yep. Drop the rail onto the line, it'll slide better metal on metal. That's it. Take it back to you. Little touch, hold her there. That's it, mate. Kev may have done this a thousand times, but perfection is in the detail. Just pull the rail out to you just a touch, because you have to adjust him here. Move him to where you want him. Yeah? It's got to go in some more, mate. OK, mate, loose her off. Seb must unwind the winch slowly and evenly. Go on. While, as ever, Kev keeps a chock at the ready. Make sure there's nothing in the way. The brakes don't drop on and lock the wheels. Uh, we've got a lot of play there. And because the ground's soft, the end of the ramp will lift now. As the ramp rail moves under the weight of the engine, this is where it could go horribly wrong. Whoa! Whoa! Back on! Hold it there. Off. The engine was incredibly close to derailing. Just as it comes down, the wheel just started to sit on the top of the line rather than dropping down inside. Because the axles don't move, it will follow whatever line it wants. So it'll tend to want to kick the ramp out. Do I drop the winch off, Gavin? Take it away. With both the steam engine and its cold tender now safely unloaded, there's one last job. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Designed for it, that. Attach them. OK, all stop. No problem. Whenever you're ready to take it away, mate. Yeah, all good. And just as Kev had promised, they'll be home on time tonight. Job and well, moved it all there. Built four ramps all together, two to load it, two to offload. Job well done. All that work, just to see it go past. Well, now you've got a photo of it, you can say that's the first wheel wheel you've moved. That is correct. See? On your CV, you can go. You helped the Polar Express. All the smiling faces of the kids at Christmas, now you go, oh, I'm responsible for that. You made kids Christmas now. Good experience for the first time. Good experience. On to bigger and better stuff. After two days of motorways, stopping traffic, and building and dismantling ramps, is trainee Seb made of the right stuff? It's a lot to take in. There's a lot of things to learn. And uh, try and get your head round the first few times you do it. <clears throat> so a little bit at a time, and uh, he'll get there. Yeah, he's doing all right. The S160 is no longer just a locomotive on a lorry. It's about to meet its adoring public. At Wallingford Station, 
Hundreds of people are en route for day one of an experience the organizers hope will garner rave reviews. We've never had anything as big as this running on this line, and therefore the volunteers, the engine drivers, the firemen are all very excited at the prospect of being able to run such a loco on this line. With an hour to go before visitors arrive, a last chance to make sure everything's looking at its best. It's absolutely gorgeous, and the amount of people that it's bringing into Wallingford, just, just purely to come and film the steam engine, take photographs of it. Today will literally be all about getting the show on the rails. We serve hot chocolate, we do some dances and a bit of singing, and we just have so, everyone have a good festive yeah, time. Have a good festive time. <laughs> With gallons of hot chocolate simmering gently and mountains of snacks standing by, all Kev, Gavin and Seb's hard work is about to pay off. Who would like to go to the North Pole? Yeah. Who would like to go and meet Santa Claus? I like steam trains because instead of um, electric, um, they, they use um, coal to put in fire and it actually makes it move. Hello, everybody. Are we all excited? Can I hear you? We've come to see a steam train today. You can see Father Christmas. As the steam train reverses gently down the platform, it's time for curtain up. but I still have a job to do, so let me see them tickets. Over the next four weeks, probably half of the country's hot chocolate supplies will be drunk and Santa will have made at least 25,000 people very happy indeed. Miss tonight's new and exclusive episode of Bangers and Cash, Restoring Classics. Catch up now with UK TV Play. Next, though, see what's on classic car buyer's rust bucket list with our most recent series of Bangers and Cash. <laughs>